Today we look at four different methods you can use to upscale images in Photoshop and compare each to see which one works the best. So I've got these three images. I've got this uh, Batman drawing I did a few years ago. I've also got this piece of AI art from Midjourney and a photo from Pexels.com. They are all roughly about the same size, give or take, sort of between sort of 900 pixels by 900 pixels to 1200 by 1200. They're all decent resolution to look at, but not high enough resolution to print. So I wanna see what results we get. Now the first one is to use the image size filter. And uh, you can also just simply use free transform. For instance, if I copy this and use free transform or control T, I have the same interpolation that I can use if I was using the image size filter. But we're gonna start with this face. So we're gonna go into image and image size. And we're gonna start off with 200%. So you can see here that the image is 1280 pixels wide. So we wanna basically move that to 200%, which gives us 2560 by 2480. Now I'm gonna blow this up so we can get a good close look. And if I zoom in a little bit, we're on nearest neighbor at the moment, which means it will simply enhance those pixels. You can see every pixel as it was in its original size. But if I go down from nearest neighbor to bilinear, it does smooth things out a little bit. Now, if I go up from bilinear to bicubic, it smooths things out again, a little bit better than bilinear. So let's compare bicubic to bilinear with the face. So you can see it's kind of blurry. Bicubic is a little bit sharper, still pretty smooth. Bicubic sharper, better for reducing image sizes and is also now by cubic smoother for enlargement so so far those are all just kind of kind of blurring the image a bit as it enlarges it if i go to preserve details all of a sudden things come to life a little bit more some of the darker outlines of the eye stand out and if i just sort of click on and off you can see the difference if i zoom into the eye a bit more you can see the impact that has if I go to by Preserve Details 2.0, which is the highest rated enlargement setting, it kind of actually, it looks smoother, but it's lost too much detail on the photo. She doesn't really, it doesn't look like a photo anymore. So I would say in this instance, Preserve Details is probably the best one to go for. But what if we want to go to 300%? Let's try 300%. Not bad. We're going to stick with that. I'm going to click OK. And now we have our image enlarged by 300%. Onto the next one, it's called Super Intelligent Bird. I go to image, resize, 200%. I zoom in. Preserve details again, not too bad. Preserve details 2.0. Actually looks probably a, maybe a little bit better in this instance. However, the details better retained in, preserve, in the first preserved details. If we go by cubic smoother, it's nothing impressive at all. By cubic sharper, pretty ordinary by cubic, which is obviously not good and by linear. So again, I would say preserved details has actually been the best way to maintain details in this image. Whilst preserved details 2.0 keeps things smoother, probably better for CG and art. And again, I'll bump it up to 300 and you can see it's done a pretty good job of smoothing out some of those details. So let's click okay. Now Batman without shading, I'm gonna go to image. And again, if I put on nearest neighbor and zoom in a bit, we got 200%. This image is 900 pixels wide. So it's not a very big image. You can see, how low resolution the lines are. So if I change that from nearest neighbor to bilinear, blurs it by cubic, blurs it a little bit less, and by cubic sharper, it all looks pretty ordinary. But by choosing these three images, we can compare how it handles different things, such as high contrast line work, uh, faces, and just general images and art in general. So when I go to preserve details, it actually creates a pretty sharp version of the image considering what we're working with. And I change it to preserve details 2.0, I think it's actually even better. So Preserve Details 2.0 is excellent for drawings and artwork. If I bump that up to 300, there's still some artifacts in there, but I can reduce the noise with this slider if I want to. But for actually upscaling my line work, and this could be the same for any really black and white line work made in say Mid Journey, it does a pretty good job of actually fixing that up. Next one I'm gonna use is Photoshop's Camera Raw Interface. Now to set that up, I do have to go to Edit, down to preferences and then over to camera raw in those settings i go down to file handling and i set it up for jpegs it can only really work with jpegs i'm going to go automatically open all supported jpegs and click ok so now when i click on my batman we'll start with the face sorry when i click on this face the camera raw interface appears and what i can do is right click and go enhance and i've got super resolution turned on and you can see it enhances the image I take it to her eye actually enhances the eye, but it only doubles the resolution. So if I click enhance, 
that image resolution is now doubled. I click open and it's done a pretty decent job of enhancing that image. So let's see what the results are doing the same with the other two images. And again, it's not bad, but there are a few artifacts. I've got Batman here. It does a pretty good job with the line work. And once again, not a bad result. And we will compare all these at the end to see which one is best. Now, the third method is using super zoom. I come up to filter, neural filters, and on the right, you'll see here super zoom, which I just turn on by hitting this switch. So now we have the super zoom over here that's opened up and we can zoom in two times. And so far, that's a pretty decent result. We can also remove noise reduction. We can enhance face detail. So I'll turn that on, we'll sharpen, reduce the noise a bit. We can play with that until we get what we want. Might bring the noise back. It looks a little bit crazy with the noise reduction on. So not bad, we're gonna add another step to triple its size, a little bit smoother again. And when we want to decide the output, we can go to a new document or we can just simply create a new layer. In this instance, we'll create a new document. So now I have this image at three times its original size and I'll apply that to these other two images as well. So the AI arts turned out okay. There are a few artifacts still that you can see in there, but overall not a bad upscale considering that um, it's just a part of Photoshop. And this drawing of Batman has actually turned out pretty well. There's a few blurry spots in there, but it, uh, it has done a pretty decent job of sort of trying to get that line work smooth and actually kind of predicting where it goes. So. It seems that the black and white images and drawings are the easiest to upscale, but uh, that's a pretty decent result. And the next step is using AI upscaling plugin by Topaz for Topaz Gigapixel. When you purchase Topaz Gigapixel, it actually adds a plugin. And I really wanted to compare this to the native Photoshop upscalers. So the way it works is you go to File, Automate, and Topaz Gigapixel, once you have it installed, obviously. It will then open up this interface and you can see how it's already added in uh, a number of details in here to the face and enhance the skin. It's currently at four times, you can go up to six times, which if you zoom in, does a pretty incredible job. But to compare it to the others fairly, I'm gonna go click on three times over here. And just using the standard settings, we can play with these a bit. I can add face recovery as well. So overall looking pretty good. I'm gonna apply that and then we'll do the exact same process for our other two images. And with the bird, you can see how it's added in a lot of detail and kind of refined some of the hair and that on the sort of kept the fuzzier areas fuzzier and the sharper areas sharper. So it's done a great job of detecting that. The Batman image is much the same, I think as an upscale, a little bit cleaner than the Photoshop version. It's done a great job again of detecting where the lines would be. And again, these have both been increased by three times and Gigapixel can go up to six times. So it's a bit more advanced in how far it can go and already adds a lot more detail in. But let's compare all of these to see which way looks best and kind of rank them in the best order. So comparing the face, this is the one-to-one -one image and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit again so we can kind of see some of the pixels. We'll start with the eye. And starting off just with image size and preserved details, you can see it's a little bit blurry. We use super resolution, even though it doesn't scale to the same size. Super zoom, a bit better, but a lot more noisy. And gigapixel, which tends to add in a lot of details. So if we zoom back out again and kind of get a bit of view maybe of the nose and teeth, if I turn off gigapixel, we're back to super zoom, which is actually a bit bit harsh We've got super resolution once again that's actually better than super zoom I think image size with preserved details so they're all a bit fuzzy with Topaz Gigapixel is the obvious winner there things like the hair is also very important so we look at the hair here very smooth I'm going to turn all these off so this is our original we got using image size super resolution the that's the camera raw filter Super zoom, a little bit better, but still fairly noisy. And Topaz's Gigapixel has added in the hair a bit more smoothly. So Topaz Gigapixel's done an excellent job, even adding blemishes to the skin and the lips, a bit of texture there, whereas the rest have kind of just tried to find ways to move the pixels around and blur them or sharpen certain light sources. And it's done a good job for what it was, especially now down here in the jumper, that looks pretty good. So if I come back to the original, pretty pixelated, Image size, kind of blurry. 
super resolution with the camera raw, a bit blurry again. Remember, this is only a two times for this one, super zoom. It does a really good job of keeping that texture because of the nature of how it works. Gigapixel actually hasn't maintained the texture as well, but from when you zoom out, it does have, a, I think, a bit of a neater look than the uh, super zoom. So, especially when you look at everything else next to it. Even the strands of hair look a bit better with Gigapixel. So, in my opinion, I would say Gigapixel is definitely the number one on that, which is it's a premium plugin, so naturally it's gonna be better than the, the just the stock standard stuff. Uh, other than that, I think Super Zoom is a, a bit a bit choppy. I thought it would be the most advanced one. Uh, didn't really get me the best results, I don't think. I actually think just using image size has been the best for this, even though it is a bit blurry. I think that's actually been the best one at, straight out of Photoshop, with Gigapixel being the next step up to make it look more like an actual photo and kind of rescue that face from its low resolution. And there's also a bunch of other settings you can use as well, which is pretty cool. Now with the bird, we've got our original image. If I zoom in, you can see around the beak and the eyes, a little bit choppy, pixely. I add image size, smooths it out a bit. Doesn't look too bad. I add super resolution, sharper, a little bit more noise. And uh, once again, it's only been enlarged by two. Super zoom, has done an okay job. Once again, it looks a bit noisy and a little bit disappointing to be honest. And Gigapixel has added in details, sharpened it all up. And if I zoom right in here, we look at some of the hairs. I can turn off Gigapixel again. So Super Zoom looking pretty ordinary. Super Resolution, a bit better than Super Zoom in my opinion. Image size is just a little bit too blurry. For AI art, it might not be too bad. But uh, the way Gigapixel actually introduces detail to the image is uh, pretty it's pretty unbeatable, I think, compared to, yeah, compared to Photoshop. So that's... Uh, Gigapixel again being the, the best plugin for Photoshop compared to the stock standard resizes. There are a bunch of other, other AI upscalers out there which I will be comparing in the future, so keep an eye out for that. But uh, again, another good comparison. Now with Batman, I zoom in, we can see all the pixels in his face. I drew this image a few years ago when I first got my tablet. It was my first test on it, so I think it's a good example. But I uh, turn on image size and the results are actually pretty good. A little bit, uh, there's a little bit of noise and artifacts on it, but not bad. Super resolution with the raw filter has kind of chopped it up a little bit. It's not bad. I think I can see where it's trying to interpret and make things a bit harder with the black and white edges. But again, it's only doubled the resolution, not tripled it, so that could be why. Super zoom actually does a really good job on this one. I think super zoom, turn off the grid. Super Zoom actually has smoothed things out. Probably the best so far. If I compare it to image size, it's a little bit better than image size. So I would say for line work, Super Zoom is actually really good. And Gigapixel, a much cleaner look. So even if I zoom in on some of these lines here, Gigapixel versus Super Zoom. Gigapixel is just cleaner. Not quite as dark, but that's an easy thing to fix. So once again, Gigapixel is better, but I would say Super Zoom has done the best job here for the line work. And uh, I imagine that uh, if you want to continue to upscale that, you can still combine some of these methods together. So that is pretty much how that works. Now I've actually got, I've got a link to Topaz Gigapixel in the description below if you want to check that out. But I hope that gives you some insight on different image types and how to upscale them in Photoshop, what the best ways to do it is. Hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great day and I hope to see you again soon.